Hey everyone, welcome back to The Homemade Haven. Today I wanted to give you guys a quick, easy recipe for making some cranberry sauce at home. I know that cranberry sauce is kind of one of those things that some people like, some people don't like, and they're either really passionate about liking or not liking. Um, some people tend to only like the canned, jelly kind of stuff and then some people only like the fresh more pureed kind of stuff and cranberry sauce in our family has not really been a tradition until the past couple of years I've started making it at home and I really love the homemade flavor of the cranberry sauce that we make and I love to go ahead and preserve several jars of it to last us throughout the year because we like to have a little spoonful with our meals um, throughout the months and it just adds a little bit of cheery bright flavor to your plate um, all throughout the year so in this video I am making a bulk batch um, I am using six 12 ounce bags of fresh cranberries and you can definitely divide this recipe down if you don't want to make so much at one time. Um, but this recipe yielded me almost nine pint sized jars once it was complete. So we start with the cranberries and we just pour them into a colander and check through and make sure there aren't any really nasty um, bruised or rotten looking cranberries. If there are, we go ahead and remove those because we don't want those in our cans. We go ahead and give a good rinse, wash them off really well, and then we add them to our stock pot. Now you want a good sized pot that will allow some foaming and um, bubbling while it's cooking. So don't go too small with your pot whenever you are choosing which one to use for this recipe. After we add all of our fresh cranberries to the pot, we are going to add some orange juice. And it's your preference if you want to use pulp or non-pulp, doesn't really matter. This is kind of a pulpy recipe anyways because I like to leave the cranberries um, with a little bit of bite to them still. And for the orange juice, we are going to put four cups and then we are going to add two cups of fresh clean water to that as well. So this recipe calls for equal parts of sugar. Um, a lot of recipes tend to do that with your jams and jellies. It will be equal parts of fruit to sugar ratio. Um, that is kind of your preference as well. You don't have to put that much sugar with your recipes. Um, it will help the texture of your recipe. If you have more sugar, it will help to stiffen it up a little bit quicker. You can just cook your recipe down a little bit more to get it that texture without adding so much sugar. We don't like so much sugar here in our household. So we cut the sugar down a little bit. Um, so the original recipe for the amount of cranberries that I am making would be four cups of white sugar and two cups of brown sugar. Now when I went to my pantry, I realized that we did not have any white sugar. All I had was brown sugar, and that's what we ended up using in total for this recipe, and the flavor was great, so I'm not really upset about it. But we only used four cups of brown sugar and no white sugar um, at all, and it was the right amount of sugar for us. Um, you can start small with your sugar, and as it cooks down, taste it and see if it's too tart for your taste. You can add more sugar and kind of do it to your own preference. Next, I added about three teaspoons of vanilla to this recipe. I just like the flavor that the vanilla gives it, just a little bit of a warm, kind of cozy flavor. And then I added two cinnamon sticks to also give it that little bit of festive kick to it. Um, you can omit any of the seasonings that you want to, or you can add more if you wanted to add clove or nutmeg or something along those lines, then absolutely feel free to do that. If you're gonna use whole cloves or something like that, make a little like satchel bag 
like a tea bag or something that it can just infuse into your recipe and then you can pull them all out later so that you don't have to go fishing out each one of the little cloves in your cranberry sauce. So once all of the ingredients are in the pot and combined, I just give it a good stir. And then I go ahead and crank up the heat on the stove. I wanna get this boiling so that these cranberries will burst open and release all their good flavor and get good and soft and the flavors will mesh together. The texture will become something kind of like a salsa chutney type sauce. Um, and again, you can cook it down a little bit more if you want to. As the cranberry sauce is cooking down, you may notice some foaming that starts to occur and that's just the starches of the fruit being released. So if that does happen, you can add a small pad of butter and this is maybe like half a tablespoon of butter into your recipe and just go ahead and mix it in really well. That oil will actually help to cut down some of that foaming. Um, if you notice that it's not cutting it down enough, go ahead and add another pad of butter. You can add little bits of butter at a time to go ahead and cut that foam out so that you're not making a big mess while you're cooking this down. And the little bits of butter that you add to it aren't gonna change the texture or flavor by any means. Once your cranberries are at a good boil and you start to hear the cranberries starting to burst open, um, you might start to see a little bit of splattering. If so, go ahead and cut your heat back down to a simmer. So in total, once I turn the heat on for my cranberry sauce, again with six bags of cranberries, it took about 15 to 20 minutes to get to the texture that I like for our cranberry sauce. You'll start to be able to see that the sauce is starting to stick to the back of a spoon. You can go ahead and dip the spoon into your sauce and let it cool down just a second and go ahead and taste it. Make sure that it's good and sweet like you like it or if there's anything else you wanna add to it to give it some more flavor. So as my sauce is going, I also have my big water bath canner going with some hot water in it and I go ahead and sterilize the pint size jars that I'm going to use for this recipe. This also gets the glass of the jars good and hot so that whenever you transfer your boiling hot cranberry sauce into them and then also place them back into the boiling water to can them. It doesn't shock the glass and you don't shatter them, um, ruining your beautiful cranberry sauce. So be sure to take that step to heat your jars in some way. And once the sauce is all ready and the jars have, have heated up nicely, I go ahead and remove the jars from the water bath and set them on a piece of glass or some kind of trivet, maybe a towel or something like that to protect your counters. Then I simply ladle the cranberry sauce into each jar, leaving about a one inch headspace between the sauce and the top of the jar. And this will allow the vacuum process to happen without siphoning out any of our cranberry sauce. Again, we wanna keep all the sauce inside of the jar and preserve all of that tasty goodness. Once all of my jars are filled, I go ahead and take a wet rag and wipe the rims of each jar to make sure that there isn't any cranberry sauce that would prevent the lid from sealing to the jar. And then once I'm done with that, I take my lids and go ahead and start putting on to the jars. Now, I did use a couple of pre-used lids some people are totally against doing that whatsoever and if that, that's you, that's fine. You can use all brand new lids. Once my lids are placed onto the jars, I go ahead and put my rings around the lids and I tighten them to finger tight. And then I gently place them into the water bath canner and lower them into the hot water. You wanna make sure that you have at least an inch of water above the tops of the jars to fully submerge them into the water so that the heat of the water is completely surrounding each jar. Once the jars are into the water, I go ahead and crank my heat up on the stove and once it is at a rolling boil, I set my timer for 10 minutes. 
and let it process for the entire 10 minutes. And I do put my lid on my pot because it helps to hold the heat in, it builds up the heat quicker. Once the 10 minutes has been reached, I go ahead and cut the heat off on the stove, take the lid off the canner, and let it sit for about a minute. And then after that, I go ahead and move the canner over to another burner to completely remove it from the heat and let it sit for another minute or so before I pull the jars up out of the water. I just try to prevent as much of the temperature shock as I can so that there isn't room for any kind of shattering. And after just a couple minutes, I'm ready to take the jars out and put them onto a drying mat. And again, you can use trivet or towels or whatever you have, but you just want to put your jars someplace that you won't have to move them or touch them within the next 12 hours or so. We want them to be completely cooled before we handle them um, so that we don't mess up the sealing process. The next morning, I go ahead and take the rings off of all of my jars and I test each lid by picking it up and making sure that none of them are loose or pop off in any way. If they are, I would simply just put that jar in the refrigerator and use it before using the other ones. Um, but thankfully, none of the jars that I processed in the canner were loose, so they are all able to go into the pantry and will last for at least a year if our family does not eat them before that, which I'm sure we probably will. I will also take a marker and go ahead and label each of the lids so that I know what's inside of the jars. Most of the time I know what's in the jars by looking at them in my pantry, but sometimes when you have several kinds of jams and jellies, it can get a little confusing. So I just go ahead and label them with what they are and the date of when they were processed so that if something gets pushed to the back of a shelf, I know later on down the road how long it's been in the pantry and if it's still good to eat. Now that our jars are all processed, we can add them to our pantry and enjoy them for months to come. We will be pulling these out on Thanksgiving with our family and like I said, enjoying them throughout the rest of the year as a condiment or a side to any dish that needs a little bit of brightening up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a very happy Thanksgiving and until the next video, we will see you later. Take care.